Hello everyone, my name is Kumar and welcome back to my channel Kumar Programming. Today from the Angular interview question answer series, we are going to cover about testing. In this video, we are going to see how we have to do the unit testing, integration testing and E2E testing and how we can write our unit test cases. Whenever you go for an interview, your interview is not going to be completed without a question from the testing. And believe me, if you have not answered a very simple question from testing, it's going to be a very negative impact to the interviewer. So now let's see what type of questions that can come from the testing. So here the basic things, first of all, interviewer may ask like why we required unit test case? What is the use of unit test case? right and then what is the difference between unit testing integration testing and e2e testing and then after that he can ask can you explain about basic component like describe it expect of testing and how many type of testing we perform and how we do it what is karma jasmine what is 3a pattern arrange act and assert how do you mock a service to inject in a unit test what is the use of before each and after each how to test the component and services and what is code coverage and how to generate the code coverage report what is spy on fake async query selector to have been called method and what is protractor and cypress and how we perform E2E testing. So these kind of questions can interview ask. These are our, all are very simple question and I'll explain everything once I'll do our practical demonstration. After completing this video, I'm pretty much confident that you will be able to learn about testing and you will be very confident to write unit test cases. So be there till the end of this video. And if you have not subscribed my channel, please subscribe it and don't forget to press the bell icon. So you will get the notification of all of my upcoming videos. Now let's go with a couple of theory questions. And then after that, we will see all these things in a practical demonstration. Okay. So now let's see the very first question, which comes from the interviewer. Why we required unit test case? And what is the importance of it? So basically unit test case in Angular or any other programming language or any framework is a very crucial part in order to maintain the code quality, preventing defect and ensuring the application we have as a expected in a constantly changing code base. And it is an essential part of overall testing strategy for building robust and reliable software. Whenever you are doing the changes in your application and you don't know what all the impact is going to be happen in our entire application. In that case, our unit test case is required. Now let's see what all the important aspects are there from the unit testing so first of all it's detecting bug early okay so if you have any defect you, you did some changes and you have some defects so you can identify your defects early rather than getting it from the production and once you are writing your unit test case your code quality is improved and it's maintainable okay anyone can get to know what type of all the cases are involved into the code and it is very useful when you are doing your refactoring the code or doing any changes and you have done some changes in your application and you don't know what all the impact is going to be there in your application so in that case your unit test case is very helpful and you can easily identify what all the impact is going to be happen in your project and whenever you do the regression testing regression testing is basically whenever you do some changes in our existing application and you want to check if your existing application is working as expected after implementation of the new changes then that testing is known as a regression testing next is continuous integration and continuous deployment automated unit testers are a fundamental part of continuous integration and deployment pipeline so whatever pipeline either Jenkins pipeline or Bitbucket pipeline or GitLab pipeline, whatever pipeline we are using, we are injecting our test cases into the pipeline and testing it before doing any deployment to our production environment. So that ensures we are deploying a defect free application to the production environment. Okay. Now next is isolation of components. Whenever we are writing the test cases, we can easily isolate the components because test cases are written individually for each and every components. Now the next thing is whenever you do the changes, you can deploy your code confidently in your production environment because all the testing related stuff is going to be covered in your test cases. Last but not the least, if you have implemented unit test cases, you can make a better software design okay now let's go to the second question 
now the second question interviewer may ask that what is difference between unit integration and e to e testing okay so it's very simple unit testing whenever we perform testing on a single unit single class okay if the, all the functionality from that class is working as expected or not that is known as a unit testing okay and we will see once i'll do our practical demonstration now the second type of testing that we have is integration testing integration testing whenever we perform our testing on a multiple associated unit right might be we are, we are having a component we are having templates services modules okay so more than one classes when we are doing the testing is known as a integration testing we are we are doing the testing some modules okay and some of the components which are associated with the other services sometimes people say as a functional testing as well now next is e to e testing basically we perform in to in testing to ensure that all the functionality is working as expected from an application from start to end and mainly this is a part of automation testing and we can achieve this by protractor or cypress that we will see at the end of this video now let's flip to the visual studio and get our hands dirty to write our unit test cases here i have created a brand new angular application as a ng unit testing in this application i'll try to cover most of the test cases scenario that are required for our applications i'll try to create some pipes and services and then i'll create couple of components and then associate those services and pipe to that component and i'll write the test cases for each and every scenario so in that way you will be able to understand how to write the unit test cases and how we have to execute them okay so now let's let's start first i'm just going to create a here one pipe so in our src folder src app here i'm just going to create a pipe and inside that pipe i'm going to create a pipe here so ng generate pipe and i'll give the pipe name as a reverse okay so if you see here here my reverse pipe is generated now let's write some code over here in order to reverse our input so here i'm just going to pass input as a value and that value would be type of string and here we are going to return value as a string okay now let's some logic in order to reverse the string so here we will check if we are getting any value inside our value input or not okay so if we are not having any value inside our value value could be either undefined or it could be blank or it could be null okay so all all those condition is going to be checked inside this okay now i have seen uh, most of the uh, i mean like programmer they are writing here value equal to equal to undefined they are checking individually for each and every for undefined for null that is not required actually you can just pass it pass it as a value here okay and that is going to be checked if the value is blank if value is undefined value is null everything is going to be checked inside this okay so here if there is no value our value is equal to blank then we have to return as a blank okay else if we have the value then we have to return as i'm just going to split this value value dot split there is a function for split and inside this split i'm going to split these things uh, the entire string with a space and once it's getting split we are going to uh, get an array and then we are going to reverse that array so here i am reversing that array and then after that i will join all the string with the blank space okay now we have a method as a join and joining all those values in the array with the blank so this is going to return our reverse string okay now we have to write the test cases for this pipe okay so now if you see here there are two files are generated okay one is the reverse.pipe.ts and one is reverse.pipe.spec.ts so this spec.ts file is basically used to write the test cases and if you see this spec file is written in jasmine so jasmine is a programming language that is being used to write the test cases okay in order to write the test cases you really don't have to learn much more about the jasmine 
you have to just remember some of the terms and then after that you will be able to write the test cases very easily in jasmine okay and karma is a test runner that is being used to run all those test cases in our http server okay now you got to know jasmine is a programming language that is being used to write the test cases and karma is a test runner that is being used to run all those test cases in our http server and if you see here both jasmine and karma is already being installed by our cli tool once i have created my application okay now let's go back to our spec file and here try to understand how we have to write our test cases okay so before writing the test cases first try to understand what is the structure we have for our test cases okay so in order to understand the structure let me create a here a box you can just think this is a big building okay this red box is a big building and in this big building we have several apartment okay one apartment two apartment three apartment and we have four apartment okay so these apartments are nothing these are apartments are our components our services our pipes and our modules okay so this big box is our application and in this big box we have a small small apartment that is our component and services and in this each and every component we have several small rooms okay like might be this apartment are having three bedroom and one kitchen okay might be this apartment is having two bedroom and one kitchen okay similarly here also it would be having some bedroom and kitchens so these bedrooms and kitchen are nothing these are the test cases okay so here we have a big application inside we have several test suite okay this is known as a test suite these apartments are i am considering here as a test suite and these test suite are having a small small test cases okay so very simple we have a big application inside a big application we have a several test suites and each and every test suites are having their own test cases okay and now if you understand the structure then it would be very easy for you to understand and writing the test cases now let's go back to our spec file so here in our spec file let me comment this code for the time being and here i am going to create a test suite okay so test suite is being created by the method as a describe and inside this describe method you have to give the name of the suites okay so the name of the suite here i am going to give as a reverse pipe testing okay and the second parameter that we have to pass as, as a fat arrow function okay that's it so our suit has been created okay now in this suit we have to create our multiple test cases okay test cases are created inside the suits by the method as it okay and inside it we have to give the test case name okay what exactly we are going to test okay so here i'm just going to give as a create an instance okay and the second parameter that we have to pass is fat arrow function okay now our test case is created okay similarly we can create multiple test cases okay and the second test case we need to check the functionality if the component functionality is working or not okay so see in the reverse pipe the functionality is to transform and reverse the string okay so in, in this test case we can give name as a should reverse the string okay and here if we have considered the positive case then we have to consider the negative case as well okay so negative case would be if suppose that we are getting a blank value or null value or undefined value in our input so it should handle that case as well okay so we can just mention as a should handle blank null and undefined value okay so now here we have three test cases okay inside our described now inside the each test cases we have a specific format in that format we have to write our each and every test cases okay and that format is 3a pattern okay 3a pattern is basically first a is for arrange second a is for act and third a is for assertion okay now let me first arrange second one is act and third one is assert okay now in the arrange basically we are arranging the mock data okay we are not going to work with the actual data so basically we have to provide the mock data mock information okay on the basis of that we are going to write the test cases okay so in the arrange section we are not required any mock data because we are just going to check if the instance is being created for this our 
reverse pipe or not okay so in the action we are going to create the instance okay so in the action what we are doing we are creating the instance of the reverse pipe and in assertion we are going to call a expect method okay so in expect method basically what we are expecting this pipe needs to be to be truthy okay and this to be truthy that is very common function that we are going to use in our throughout the test cases to be truthy means this particular instance is initialized okay this is not null this is not undefined okay so this test case is going to be executed now similarly we are going to do write the second test case here should reverse the string okay because this is the main um, functionality of this component so here we are going to arrange a data okay so here i am just taking a variable as a const data and let me write let me take a data as a hello okay so we have arranged the data on this data we are going to perform the execution of this test case okay second thing that we have created the instance and then after creating the instance we have to call the transform method okay so here i am just going to create another variable const result that would be equal to pipe dot transform okay because pipe dot transform method we have and we will pass this data inside this okay now what we are expecting in this result would be so here expect this result here we are going to check to be and that will be just opposite of hello okay o double l e h so this is the expected output from this test case if this is working then we are we can say our transform functionality is working as expected okay now similarly we will write the, our third test case as well here i'm just going to arrange a data so here we have to check our negative things if our data is blank or our data is null or undefined okay null or undefined now in the act section we are creating the object for this pipe and then we are doing the transform and what we are expecting here we are expecting here to be a blank value okay if you remember that we have already written it if the value is null or undefined or blank then we are returning the blank value okay so if you see in the test cases we are calling this transform method and if this our data is null then we are returning a to be a blank value so i'm just going to delete this so now our test case is ready for this particular component reverse pipe component and we have written these test cases for individual component okay we are not having any dependency now let's run this test case and see if it's working or not as expected control j in order to run the test case we have a command ng test now our code is building actually now our karma is running so i told you the karma is a runner for our test cases so if you see here let me expand it app component this is already being written inside our application so we are not going to consider for now but if you see reverse pipe testing okay this is our test suite okay and inside this test suite we have created a should reverse the string that is also getting passed and create an instance that is also being passed and should handle blank and null and undefined value that is also being passed so these all are three test cases that we have written inside this test suite and everything is being passed okay now let's just test it if we do provide some wrong information okay so suppose that here i am just providing a input as a hello one so we are expecting here hello right but it should be hello one so if you see here my one test case is being failed now if you go to the karma here also if you see one test case is being failed if you see the list should reverse the string that test case is being failed here okay here one more thing that we have to take care is let's go back to our visual studio now let's correct it okay hello so if you see here here we are having these lines common in all our test cases okay so somehow if we can remove this line and we can declare it at the beginning of the suit okay here we have a method as a before each okay so before each same we have to pass a fat arrow function inside this okay and we can cut this line from here and we can paste it here okay now we can remove this line from here as well and we can remove this line from here as well okay now let me declare a variable here let pipe would be a type of reverse pipe okay we'll remove the const from here now this pipe is available in each and every test cases okay 
and if you see here here we are creating the instance of reverse pipe okay so basically in angular we have a dependency injection okay so rather than creating the instance of services we can inject it okay so here in angular there is a utility provided as a test bed okay and test bed is from angular core testing okay so here we have test bed and this test bed is basically provide a module where you can inject all your dependency okay either it's service dependency or it could be a um, uh, component dependency whatever dependency you have you can inject inside our test bed okay so test bed dot configure testing module okay and inside this testing module we can inject okay so here we know providers we know how to inject in angular provider and we are going to inject here reverse pipe okay and here rather than creating the instance we can pipe equal to we will replace this line with test bed dot inject okay and we are going to what we are going to inject as a reverse pipe that's all so what exactly is going to be happen this before each function is going to call for each and every test cases and it's going to inject our reverse pipe for each and every test cases okay and this test bed it's creating a module configuring a module where we can add our all the dependency okay so that's all from this uh, reverse pipe test cases let's see if it's working as expected or not yep if you see here six success and let's go back to the browser and if you see here let me expand it so if you see here this reverse pipe testing is working as expected and all the test cases are being passed now similarly i'll create a service and from that service i'm going to fetch the data from the api and then i'll bind those data to our component okay so now let's create a service here go to our terminal here and ng generate we can directly create here as services and inside this i'm just going to create a author service because we are going to load the author data okay so now it's going to generate a service inside our services folder sorry we have to we have to write ng generate service okay s is the short form for the services now it will generate a service inside our services folder so if you see here now my service has been created if you see here i have a author service and under that i have a author service spec.ts okay now let me write the code in order to fetch the author data from our author service from author api so already i have written a api in node from where i am fetching the author data so let me show you that api as well so here i have a library api let me run this nodemon src server.ts okay i'll make a separate video how to create the api in node as of now already i have created this api and i'll provide the code reference in our description from the github so you can uh, take the reference from there for the time being i'm just executing this api therefore i can fetch the data from this api okay so if you see api is running on 4001 port so now let's see localhost 4001 okay author so if you see here we are getting the author data from our backend service now we are going to use this url in our application so now here in our author service i'll create a variable over here as a api url that would be equal to my api url here and now in the constructor i'm going to inject our http client so private http that would be type of http client okay now let's import this http client from import we have a http client from we have at the rate angular and common http something like that angular common http yep now we are going to create a method over here to fetch the data from the our api okay so now here i'll make a method as a get author i'll make it as a get author because we are going to get the list so get authors and it's going to return an observable of an array okay so here i'll return an observable because each and every services are returning an observable or promise okay so here i'm going to return an observable that would be type of any array and we have to import observe our observable as well so here i'll give as a quick fix import from rxjs okay now here we have to return okay so what we have to return this dot http dot get and it's going to return the value as the type would be any array and then we are passing the 
url okay so this dot api url okay so now this is going to return an observable and we have to handle the error also right so here i'm just creating a pipe dot pipe and inside this pipe i'm going to um, call the rxjs catch error catch error and this catch error is going to handle the the error received in the api okay so this dot handle error now let's import this catch error as well okay and now now let's create this dot handle error so we will create a private method over here handle error which is going to have the error inside that type of http error response and which is going to return an observable okay type of any and here we are going to return throw error okay so whatever the error that we are getting we are going to handle it gracefully over here okay so we will pass a fat arrow function inside this and here we will mention as a error occurred okay error occurred and we would be getting the error also so here we have a dollar sign and curly bracket and then we have to pass the error okay we have to import this throw error as well from rxgs okay now we are expecting that this service is going to return our author data and handle the error and we will write the test cases for this so go to the author spec file if you see here it's already given a described suit and here it's given as a author service and before each already is being configured here testbed.configure testing module and we are using the author service right so this service is already getting injected over here and it's created already one test case here as a should be created okay and it's checking if this service is initialized or not to be truthy okay now let's see our functionality so here if you remember that we are using a http client okay so we have to import that module in our testing as well okay so here inside our import imports and here we will put our http client testing module in our services we have http client and here similarly we have http client testing module so now let's import this http client testing module import http client testing module from same also here we have angular common angular common and we have http testing okay so we have added our dependency for our http client here here we have to mark our http request as well so in order to mark our http request here we will create a variable as a http mock so let http mock and that would be a type of http testing controller okay testing controller and this http testing controller is part of http common testing as well okay now here we are going to this http mock inject in our test bed so this http mock equal to testbed dot inject and we are going to inject this http test controller here this http mock is going to mock our request so in testing we have to mock everything we have to mock our data we have to mock our uh, services we have to mock our components everything we have to mock we should not work on a actual data right now let's create a test case for its functionality and the functionality is author service get author function return the author list okay so now let's write a test case here i'm just going to copy paste here get authors should return author list okay now i'll remove this so first of all what we have to do we have to arrange the data so in order to arrange so what we need we need the url okay so already we are using this url let me use this same url over here as well so i'm going to copy it i'll paste it over here okay const api url okay and the second thing we have to mock the data what kind of data service is going to return okay so here i'll write the const expected data okay that would be type of any as of now and equal to let's see what type of data that we are getting from our service so this is the data that we are getting so i'm just going to take only one from here and i'll paste it however this is this data is completely a mock data so we are not required to actually give the actual value name email and let me remove the other fields from here now what we can do we can copy the same thing okay and here we will put some other id so this data is completely a mock data okay here we could put anything 
but as per our understanding we have to provide some valid input over here okay so far we have arranged our data now we need to take the action okay so we have to call our service method service dot get authors right and dot subscribe because it's going to return an observable okay and inside this our subscribe data tends to here what would here what we are expecting expect this data needs to be equal to the expected data okay data to equal to the expected data okay here one more thing that we have to uh, mark our request as well so i'll create a const request and here http mock dot expect one okay expect one is basically is taking the url from that url you are getting the fetching the data okay so here expect expect one and what it is what it is expecting it is expecting this url okay now we have created our request here so here we have arranged the data we had we have taken the action now we have to perform the assert okay so in the assert what we are expecting expect first of all we should expect this this request should be get request okay so here request dot dot request dot method should be get okay to equal get and now we have to fetch the data from this request okay so in order to fetch the data from the request we are using the plus okay so request dot plus and what kind of data that we are going to plus that we are going to plus this expected data okay so see here we have uh, arranged the data we have taken our api url and then we are providing some expected data and here we have mocked our url okay now we have called our services get author method where we are expecting this data needs to be equal to our expected data okay and from from this request we are flushing this expected data only okay so eventually once we will flush this data from here this service is going to return this data only and eventually we are going to check if return data is going to be equal to our expected data okay and this is a asynchronous call so here we have to use a sync and if you are using a sync then we have to use a wait okay and similarly i'll write the test cases for our negative cases so i'll just copy paste here and here get author should handle error while fetching data okay while fetching data now here we should be having the same url but we are not here expecting any data we should be expecting some error message okay so i'll just put a const error message over here i'll put some message as error occurred okay now third thing that we have to mock our http request so here i'm mocking mocking our http request and here we are not going to in case of data so we are not going to use this data i'll remove this and here we are going to fail that okay once we return the data explicitly we are going to make it fail okay so here i'll write a fail there is a fail method and we can fail it okay and i'll put some random message over here expected add an error okay and what i have to do in case of error i hope that you are knowing that we have a in subscribe we have a three method first one is for data second one is for error and third one is for complete okay so here the second one is for error if we received error so here in the fat arrow function we are going to expect this error message contain this our error message okay so expect this error to contain okay in order to check anything is contained or not we are using to contain so here to contain what we are expecting to contain this error message okay now we took the action also now it's time to assertion okay so in assertion expect this first of all this should be the get request that's fine okay and now in in place of request dot plus we are using request dot error okay in place of request dot plus we are using request dot error and we have to provide an error event inside this so new error event and what we are going to pass the same error message this error occurred okay so are you getting the point here we are forcefully we are saying that this request needs to return this message error occurred and same thing here inside our uh, subscribe method we are checking if this error event is having the same error message okay now let's control a control kf 
so it's going to be formatted now let's run our test cases ng test let's see if all the test cases are working as expected or not as of now it's building now our karma is running let's see so now here we are seeing uh, three cases are getting filled let's check the first one so expected o double l e h to be o double l e h one okay so okay so we remember that we changed one of the pipe here so it should be hello okay so it's corrected now now let's go to back to our author service in our author service still our two test cases are getting filled expected one matching request for criteria this but found none okay so here basically this request needs to be part of our assertion okay because here we are expecting this request needs to be this mock request expect one this url okay so this should be part of our assertion and similarly this one also needs to be part of our so i'll move it down yep yep so if you see all the nine test cases are success now let's go back to our browser yep let me expand it so if you see here from the author service all the three test cases are running as expected now here one more thing that i'll tell you we need to generate the report also okay so now let me show you how to generate the report i'll running the command once again here in our command ng test we have to return code coverage okay so this code coverage is going to tell you how much code is covered by your test cases okay so now let's run it so now if you see here there is a folder will be generated for coverage so here our karma test runner is running and now here if you see all the nine test cases are succeeded and here we are seeing the report okay so the, here we have statement branch function and lines so if you see here each and everything is being covered 100% now i'll show you if i just remove this test case okay the negative test case so what will happen see our function is as of now 66% only we have not covered our negative cases so we have to cover our positive as well as negative cases on the on the basis of the condition which we have given over here okay so here we have fetched the data and we have handled the error so similarly we have write the test cases to handle the error as well okay in most of the company client is asking for the report around more than 80 85% is but some of the client are required for 95% as well so always we can check how much code has been covered through our test cases so this is the one way that we can do now let me uncomment this line so now you can see my my code is 100% covered with the test cases okay now further i am going to create author component in in that author component i'll load the data this author list and then after that i'll create a login form and i'll write the test cases for that as well okay in our previous video we have seen how to write the unit test cases and i have created a pipe where i have transformed the value in a reverse order then after that i have created the required test cases for that pipe after that i have created a service author service in author service i am fetching the data from our api and then i have handled the error as well further we have created the required test cases for our service author service for its positive as well as its negative scenario where we are fetching the data and here where we are handling the error in case of any error occurs in our service and in this we have learned about describe before each configure testing module test bed inject to be true the it expect plus to equal expect one and many more and then after that we have seen how to run the test cases in our karma runner okay so if you have not gone through the first part of this video then i would request you to please go through with that first so you will learn from the scratch link is given below in the description box and if you have not subscribed this channel please subscribe it and don't forget to press the bell icon so you will never miss an update for all of my upcoming videos now let's move further ahead with our author component now let's open the terminal now let's create a component ng generate component and we are going to create author component inside our components folder so here i'll create a component components and then i'll give the author okay now it's going to generate my author component inside component folders so if you see here inside our app folders we have a components folder and inside this component folder my author component is created okay now let's go to the author component.ts file first and fetch the data from our author service so here we will use the constructor 
and inside this constructor we are going to inject our author service so private and we know how to inject our service right so here we will give author service type of author service here now we have created our constructor and we have injected our author service inside our constructor okay now we are going to create a method as a get author and inside that method we are going to fetch the data from our service okay so this dot author service dot get authors now we know if if you want to fetch the data from the service we have to use subscribe and inside this subscribe we have three callback function first one is for data so let's go with the data first fat arrow function here we are going to get the authors so here i'll create for author authors and i'll put type as a any okay in this author i am going to save the data okay so this this dot authors equal to data okay now i have assigned our data to our authors now let's handle the error as well so if we get the error we know in our subscribe method we have a first success then error and then complete okay three callback functions are there so here in the error we are going to pass the error message so here i'll take another variable as a error message let's give as a any and initially i am going to pass it as a blank okay now here this dot error message now i'm going to pass it as a service error okay now we are done with our get authors method now we have to call this method inside our ng on in it okay so here implements on in it and now here implement the ng on in it from on in it interface now here i am going to call this dot get authors okay and once we have received this author data from our author service we have to bind this into our author component html page so now let's bind our authors data over here so i'll take a ulli over here and in this li i'm going to make a loop okay so we know we are going to use our ng for star ng for and here in the item i'm going to make as a author and then here in the second option we have author list okay so here we have our authors and what exactly we are going to display in this so we are going to display here authors name okay author dot name right as well as we have to show our error message as well so here i'll give a span and in this span i'll pass the error message in case we have error message let's make it on top now let's save it now let's open another terminal now let's run this application so ng serve hyphen o hyphen o is going to open in the browser we won't be able to call this our author page because we have not uh, added this in our router so now let's add the router for our author page over here meanwhile it's building so inside this author i'm going to error message does not exist on the author component so let's see what is the message we have given over here this is error message okay so we will give the same message over here okay now let's go back to our routing module here we will create a route for our author so we know how to do that path and then we have to give the router name so i'll give router name as a author and then we have to give the which component it needs to be bind with this route okay so here component and component needs to bind with the author component okay that's all now it's compiled successfully now let's see if it is running successfully so here local host 4200 and now let's go to the author page so in the author however it's not going to the author page let's see what is the issue open your developer tools here if you see a uh, uncaught http client no provider for http client this is very common error so go to our app module and here you have to provide our http client module okay now save it let's go back to our page and author now if you see here at the bottom author work okay but we are not getting the data from our service because our service is not running now let's run our service as well so this is my library api now let me run this nodemon src server.ts file so now our api is running now let's go back and refresh this page still we are getting error if li is an angular component it has a ng for of okay so it's some issues with our ng for author component html okay here i have given double star that could be the issue yep now let's save it and let's go back to our page yeah so if you see here all of my authors are getting displayed over here as of now we are not required all these information so let me just remove it quickly go to our app component html page that is the default details are given over there so i'll remove it quickly from there so i'll keep the banner there and 
I will remove all those things. Card container, hidden selection, terminal, card container, footer. Yeah, actually I was looking for the router outlet. So router outlet is given at the bottom side. So we are good to remove all those things. Or we can have this content div and we can remove everything from this content div. Okay. And we can move our router outlet to inside our content div. Okay. Here I'm keeping my style for now. Now let's save it and let's see how exactly it look like. Yeah. So author works and list of all the author details are loading. Now we are going to write the test cases for it. Now let's go back to our application. Go to our author component.spec.ts file. Here if you see already we have a test suite as an author component. I already I already I have explained about the describe from where we are creating our test suite and here we have before each this before each being configured for each and every test cases and each and every test cases are, are being created by it method okay and inside that we have a 3a pattern arrange act and assert okay and this to be truthy is going to check if this component is being initialized or not now let me explain you a little bit this test bit configuration that is going to configure our testing module and in this testing module we have to configure our all the components and inject our services okay so here I am using our author component. So here I have to give a declaration author component then fixture its test bed is going to create the component from our author component. So this fixture is having our component then fixture dot component instance is going to create the component and here fixture dot detect changes is going to detect any changes is being happening on the page or not. Okay. And this is a test cases that framework is already being provided. Now we are going to create other test cases. So first of all, we are going to use our HTTP client module. So here we have to import HTTP client testing module. Similarly, we have a testing module for HTTP client here in our test bed as well. And we have to add inside our square bracket because here we can add our multiple modules. Now we have to provide the reference for our service as well. So here we know how to provide providers inside providers we have to give the reference for our service okay so we are going to use author service now i'm going to create a variable over here let service type of author service okay and here i'm going to instantiate our service equal to testbed dot inject already we have learned in our previous video author service okay so now we have injected our author service and instantiated. So now in this service, we are having our author service object. Okay. Now we have configured before each. Now let's create our test cases. So here I'm going to create a test case with method it and I'll give the test case name over here. It should fetch the data, the main functionality. It should fetch the data from service and display it. Okay. Should fetch data from author service and display it. Okay. And we have to pass a fat arrow function over here now inside that I we will write our test case so first of all what we have to do we have to arrange the data okay so here arrange create a variable over here const let me give as a test data or let me give as a author data and that would be equal to be an array of objects now here I will give name I told you we can give it anything over here so here I'll give the test author one similarly I'll create another object and here I'll give the test author name two okay now we are going to fetch the data from service right so we are not going to actually fetch the data from the service so what we have to do we have to spy on actually there is a method spy on so spy on basically allow dynamically intercepting to a function call and change the result dynamically okay so now let's see what does it mean we have a spy on method over here and in this spy on i'm going to spy on on a method for our author service and for which method I'm going to spy on it's a get authors. Okay, so I'm not going to call the actual service. Okay, I'm spying on the service method get authors and then I'm going to return some value then and dot we have a method over here as a return value return value. Okay, and here I'm going to return our this author data. Okay, so here we have off. So this should return uh, observable. So we here we have from RxJS library of which will return the observable. So here off of author data. Okay. Now let's import it from our RxJS. Yep. So now this is going to return an observable and we are spying on get authors method. Okay. We have arranged our data. Now we have to call our 
ng on in it right so fixture dot detect changes is going to call our ng in it as well okay because we are loading our data on ng in it okay now further so this is our action actually now further we have to do the assertion okay so in the assertion first of all we have to find out our list item is being binded or not okay so here if you see in our other component now we are testing our component as well html part so this could be the part of integration okay so here we are not testing only the component individual functionality moreover here here we are testing for our other component html page as well okay so now let's go back to our spec.ts and here we have to find out our list item component okay so we have to find out our these components in our spec file so let's see how to find this so i'm going to const list item and then from fixture fixture dot there is a property as a native element so native element dot query selector all okay query selector all and what we are going to select over here we are going to select li okay this is our li tag so it's going to select fetch all the li tag from our components okay now what we are going to expect the first thing so expect this list item dot length equal to our author data length okay so this list item dot length to be our author data dot length okay so first of all we are going to use our http client module so here we have to import http client testing module similarly we have a testing module for http client here in our test bed as well and we have to add inside our square bracket because here we can add our multiple modules now we have to provide the reference for our service as well so here we know how to provide providers inside providers we have to give the reference for our service okay so we are going to use author service now i'm going to create a variable over here let service type of author service okay and here i'm going to instantiate our service equal to testbed dot inject already we have learned in our previous video author service okay so now we have injected our author service and instantiated so now in this service we are having our author service object okay now we have configured before each now let's create our test cases so here i'm going to create a test case with method it and i'll give the test case name over here it should fetch the data the main functionality it should fetch the data from service and display it okay should fetch data from author service and display it okay and we have to pass a fat arrow function over here now inside that i we will write our test case so first of all what we have to do we have to arrange the data okay so here arrange create a variable over here const let me give as a test data or let me give as a author data and that would be equal to be an array of objects now here i will give name i told you we can give it anything over here so here i'll give the test author one similarly i'll create another object and here i'll give the test author name two okay now we are going to fetch the data from service right so we are not going to actually fetch the data from the service so what we have to do we have to spy on actually there is a method spy on so spy on basically allow dynamically intercepting to a function call and change the result dynamically okay so now let's see what does it mean we have a spy on method over here and in this spy on i'm going to spy on on a method for our author service and for which method i am going to spy on it's a get authors okay so i am not going to call the actual service okay i am spying on the service method get authors and then i am going to return some value then and dot we have a method over here as a return value return value okay and here i am going to return our this author data okay so here we have off so this should return uh, observable so we here we have from rxjs library of which will return the observable so here off of author data okay now let's import it from our rxjs yeah so now this is going to return an observable and we are spying on get authors method okay we have arranged our data now we have to call our 
ng on in it right so fixture dot detect changes is going to call our ng in it as well okay because we are loading our data on ng in it okay now further so this is our action actually now further we have to do the assertion okay so in the assertion first of all we have to find out our list item is being binded or not okay so here if you see in our other component now we are testing our component as well html part so this could be the part of integration okay so here we are not testing only the component individual functionality moreover here here we are testing for our other component html page as well okay so now let's go back to our spec.ts and here we have to find out our list item component okay so we have to find out our these components in our spec file so let's see how to find this so i'm going to const list item and then from fixture fixture dot there is a property as a native element so native element dot query selector all okay query selector all and what we are going to select over here we are going to select li okay this is our li tag so it's going to select fetch all the li tag from our components okay now what we are going to expect the first thing so expect this list item dot length equal to our author data length okay so this list item dot length to be our author data dot length okay dot length okay now what else that we have to expect these list item should be having author dot name value okay so now let's see how we can do that so here i'm just going to copy the same line expect list item first okay list item so first list item dot uh, it's having text content so here we would be having text content and that needs to contain here we have to check the contain method contain and what it should be containing it should be containing this test author one okay so what we can do here author data so here we have first author data dot name okay right and similarly we can do for the second li element as well it should contain the second author data dot name here we have dot okay now here few more thing that we have to be taken care that is we are calling our service that is being asynchronous okay so here we have a function like fake async okay so what we will do we will use that function fake async and we will pass this our entire thing inside our fake async method okay now this fake async needs to be imported from our angular core testing okay since this is a asynchronous call so we have to use there is a method tick okay basically this tick method simulate the passage of time to complete the asynchronous operation okay so whatever the time is going to be taken by your asynchronous call is going to simulate that okay so here this and this tick method is also from our angular core testing okay now what exactly happened here we have given our data author data and then we have spy on on our service for get author method and then after that we are calling our ng on in it okay and then we are simulating tick and this tick is going to simulate our asynchronous call from the service and once it's done then after that we have to call our fixer dot detect changes once again okay because here we are binding our data okay once data is being binded then again we have to detect our changes done on the page now we are here we are finding our elements and then we are expecting our author data our list item should be binded with our author data and length of this list item is equal to author data dot length okay so basically Basically here we have two author so it should be two okay and then after that we are checking here if our li element is being binded with this specific data or not okay so this is all that we have to do in order to test if our service is fetching data and properly binding to the component or not okay now next thing we have to do our handle the error okay so now let's copy this and we will give the name as should handle error handle service error gracefully okay okay let's come to the arrange part so here we are not required any mock data now come to the spy on so here once we call our get author method and we are returning the value so here what we have to return we have to return the observable for error okay so here i am going to return a new observable and what we are going to have in this observable is we have a fat arrow function and here we have observer and this observer is going to return the error error as new error as error occurred okay and this observable needs to import it from our rxjs library okay 
and this should not be part of actually off so we will remove the off from here we are directly returning an observable from here so yep so from our service deliberately we are returning an error okay now once we have our error then we are having our fixer.detect changes okay and tick i told you that tick is simulate to passes the time to complete our asynchronous call okay now in this assertion we are going to uh, fixer.detect changes that's fine and now we ha we have to find our component where we are going to show our error message okay so here i'll find our element const error element and that would be fixer.native element dot query selector okay so here we are not going to here we are going to select only one element so here we will use query selector and what we are going to select we are going to select a error message okay so here i'll uh, and the we are going to select by the class so here i'll use the dot error message and same class i will give it to our html and here we have a span so here i'll add this class to this span as a error message okay and we are not going to do this so we will remove it so we are not required all those lines so here what we are expecting this error message this error element have the content as a service error okay so now let's see error element dot text content to contain what it needs to contain as a service error okay why it should contain the service error because if you see in our author component here we are giving error message as a in case of any error occurred in our author service so we have given here service error so same message needs to be checked in our test cases as well okay now let's format the code control a control k f okay so now it's formatted so here we have written two test cases one for fetch the data and bind the data to our html okay and now second that we are checking for its negative scenario when service gets failed and it's binding and our error message span is getting binded with the service error messages or not okay now let's test it if this is working as expected or not now let me open another terminal ng test now it's loaded now let's see we have several error over here so should fetch data from author service and display it okay so it's and expected zero to be two so now let's see what is the error there so let's see what is the issue here um here we are calling as a fixer dot detect changes here we are also calling fixer dot detect changes so basically uh, this query selector all is not able to find this element so what we have to okay so let's comment this fixer dot detect changes and because already we are doing the fixer dot detect changes over here yeah it seems like it's being passed now let's see yeah so our rest of the test cases have been passed now here only one test case is getting failed that is from our app component now let's go back to our app component here we have our app component dot spec dot ts so if you remember that we have removed all of our elements from our app component html page so it's not getting binded so it's not finding all those values so i'm going to remove that test case from here to render title so i'll remove this to render title okay because now we are not having this content span already we have removed it so i will comment it rather than commenting we have another option over here if you don't want to run this particular test case you can just make it as a x in front of it okay now what is going to be happen this test case is going to be ignored okay now let's see that in our karma refresh it yep all the test case is being passed and if you see here in our app component this should render title pending with message temporary disabled and what else if i want to disable the complete shoot so what we have to do if we want to disable the complete test cases so here we can write x in front of describe okay so what is going to happen it's going to disable the entire test cases from our that particular component now let's see see here our app component all the test cases being are disabled so sometime once we are doing our programming we are focusing on our specific component and we are not taking care of the other components in that case this is very helpful we can just ignore those test cases and we can focus on the test cases where we are working on okay and what else if we want to execute only a specific test suit and disable all other test cases so rather than making x for each and every test cases you can just make it as a ef okay and we will remove the x from here so what is it is going to happen it's going to execute 
this test case and rest of all other test cases is going to be disabled so now let's go back to our karma so if you see here render title yeah we have to remove this okay so our so now what it should happen only this test should should be executed okay and rest of the other test cases needs to be ignored now let's see in our karma so if you see here only my app component test cases are getting executed and rest of other test cases are being ignored however we are not going to use these test cases i hope that you are getting idea how to write the test cases and how we have to execute them okay now let me further create an a login form and write the test cases for that form as well okay but before that let's run our coverage report so we can see how much our test cases is being covered so far so let's go to our now control c in order to terminate our current execution now i'll write here ng test and i'll give the code coverage okay now let's run it hopefully this should be having 100% code coverage since we have considered our positive as well as negative scenario both so here basically all the test cases are being disabled so that's the reason we are getting here the code coverage summary is all everything is in red so now let's enable our all of our test cases so we'll go to the our app component where we have uh, disabled our test cases so here we are going to remove this f and this test case that we are not going to cover okay yeah so see now now our all the 11 test cases are being passed and our code coverage is 100% for each section statement branch and function and line okay and if you see the report here also all our all the test cases are being passed here okay now for that i'm going to create a login form and i'll give a submit button over there and then after that i'll write the test cases for that login form as well okay now let's create a login component open a terminal here ng generate component and we are going to create a login component inside our component folder okay components and then login so now it's going to create a login component inside our components folder so now if you see here in our inside our components folder we have our login component is created now let's go to the our login html component here i'm going to paste a template for our login form so here I have created a form group as a name as a login form and on this particular form on ng submit i'm calling on submit function and here we have a label as a username and the input control similarly here we have password and form control we have password okay at the end of this form we are having a submit button for login which is being disabled in case of form is invalid okay now let's go back to our ts file so inside our login component let's inject our form builder inside our constructor private form builder type of form builder okay and this form builder is imported from angular form okay now inside our constructor we are going to form now we are going to build the login form so here i'll make a variable as a login form type of form group and we need to import this form group from angular form itself so we will import from angular form and now this login form this dot login form equal to we are going to build the form so this dot form builder dot group and inside this group we are going to create our control so we have our control as a username name and here we are initially we are going to pass as a blank value and then we are going to give as a validation so first validation we are going to give as a validator dot required here validators also needs to be imported from angular form itself and second input and second validation that we have to give as a minimum length for five character okay so validators dot min length would be five okay so this is the validation we have given for the user now similarly we are going to create a another element for our password so here we will give password and here we are just going to give as a required field okay we are not going to give any validation for the length okay that's all done for our form builder now let's on click we are if you see here on click we are calling a submit on submit method so here we are going to call on button click on submit and inside this submit we are going to check if our our login form is valid or not okay if our this dot login form dot valid okay 
if our form is valid then we can emit as a value true from here okay now let's create an output variable over here so i'll give at the rate output at the rate output as a login success and that would be new event emitter okay so new event emitter and that would be a type of boolean and this output decorator needs to be given like this okay now further once our login form is valid then we can just emit the true value over here okay so this dot login success dot emit value as a true okay so now we have written the code for a on submit as well okay now let's test it if it's working or not ng so hyphen o okay so it's giving some error let's see what exactly the error is cannot bind the form group since it's not a property of form okay why this error this is a very common error because this form is a reactive form okay so we have to add our reactive form module inside our app module okay so here reactive form module so now if you see it's built successfully now let's see refresh this page and here we are going to move to the login page so let it's not going to the login page now let's see what is the issue control shift i in order to open our developer tool so here we have cannot match any route for login okay so why it is coming because we have not given any route for our login page so go to app routing and here we will give the route for login page as well and here login component okay now let's go back to our page once again and here login so if you see here now we are able to see our login page and if you see our login button is disabled now i'm going to give the username as a kumar and password i'm going to give one two three four five okay so now our login button is enabled but we have given a validation over here if username length is less than five then our login button is going to be disabled okay now here we can see what form value once we have submitted our data so now let's go to our login component here we can log our value first console.log and we are going to log this dot login form dot value okay now come to the application here kumar and password one two three four five and now here login so if you see here i am getting form value as a username kumar and password one two three four and form is valid okay now we have to write the test cases for this form so now let's go back to our spec file here we have our spec file now we need to write the test cases for our login component so our first test case would be form should be invalid when it's empty okay so we are going to write this we are going to copy this and paste it should invalid when form is empty okay and this would be very simple simply we have to check our component dot login form dot valid okay and what we have to check it shouldn't be true the it should it should be falsey because initially our login form would be invalid because we have not passed any value to our username and password okay so what we are expecting here it should be to be falsey to be falsey okay so this is the one test case now we have to check further our fields as well okay so we have two fields username and password okay so now let me copy this same thing should check validity for user name okay so let me create a variable over here const username equal to we have to find out that username control okay so here component dot login form dot controls and we can find out our control username okay and what we can check we have not passed any value inside our username so it should be false initially okay so here username dot so that's true now second thing that we have to check for the valid value okay so what we are going to do username dot uh, set value and we are going to set the value over here like kumar and what we can expect now this value should be true the okay to be true the to be true the now the third scenario that we have to test here if the length of this username value is less than five okay so what we are going to do we will copy this the entire thing paste it and i'll paste it over here length as a four and then it would be to be false okay all the conditions are being checked over here for our username field now same we have to check for the 
password as well okay so i'll just copy it and paste it over here so check validity for password and here i'll find the control as a password and this i'll replace this password password dot valid initially password would be falsy and once we are going to enter the password like one two three four five six then this password dot valid to be truthy okay that's all here we are not checking any length for our password and now the what the third test case that could be form should be valid if we have entered the valid value in the both of the fields okay so here i'll give another test case over here as a form should be valid if both fields are valid okay so here we found our username so i'll copy this so here we have our username as well as password i'm going to set the value inside our user so we found both of the control and we have set the value in you proper value in username and password then what we are expecting this form component dot login form dot valid to be truthy okay this is our expectation so here also if you see we are using the 3a pattern here we are arranging the data then we are taking the action and finally we are doing the assertion now here the other test case would be form should emit login success on successful form submission okay so the, this is our positive case we have given all the valid values and we are submitting the form so once we are we have to submit the form so our login success event should emit the value we are not going to call our login success emit event so we have to spy on that okay so we are using spy on and where exactly we have to use our spy on we have to use spy on our component login success event okay so here component dot login success and on which method that we have to call our spy on so we are we can use our emit here we can provide the multiple function as well now we found our control username and password then we have passed the proper value now we are going to take the action okay and we are going to call our on submit method okay so component dot on submit method that we are going to call and once we are getting called then what we are expecting we are expecting our component dot login success should emit okay dot emit and what is our expectation is to have been called with so you here you can several methods are there like you have been called have have been called before once with times and with okay so here i'm going to use to have been called with true value okay that's it so this is our positive test case now we have to write our negative test case as well so our form should be disabled in case of invalid value okay so here i'll copy this and here form should not emit login success on form invalid okay invalid so what we have to write over here we are using the spy on on emit and then here we are creating our controls finding our control username and password here we are putting the username as a kumar and password i am going to put the blank and then i am going to submit our component and what is our expectation emit should not okay not to have been called and here we are going to use dot to have been called and we are not going to pass any parameter over here so that's all now let's see how much code coverage is being done by our test cases now let me open another terminal here and here we are going to write the command ng test code coverage now here we are seeing several error so if you see here can't bind the form group since it is not a known property okay so basically here we have not added our reactive form module so here we have to give our import imports and we have to add our reactive form module okay it should be forms imported from angular forms yep so if you see now all of our test cases is being passed and we have covered our 100% code coverage okay now if you see the karma here if you see let me expand it and if you see for the login component all the test cases are being successfully passed even the test cases from our entire application is also being completely passed 
So far we have covered for our unit testing as well as integration testing and we have also covered how to write the unit test cases and I try to cover most of the test cases scenario that is required in our application. Now further quickly I am going to show you how to do the end to end testing. Basically before Angular 12 we were having already protractor inside our Angular framework in order to do the E2E testing but now they have removed. Now we have to do it manually. So let's start it. So here I am just going to write ng E2E. So it's going to configure our package for E2E. And if you see here we have an option for no and then we have Cypress, Nightwatch and WebDriver IO. So from here they have uh, removed the protractor also. Nowadays uh, Cypress is being used widely so I'm going to use Cypress here. I can close the other files from here. So it's asking to install the package. Yes. Now let's install it. So our package is getting installed. It will take some time. So yeah, package installed. Now would you like to add Cypress component testing? Yes. So now once package is getting installed, you can see here we have, there is a Cypress folder is created inside Cypress. If you see uh, there is a folder created as E2E e, and inside that we have our spec file. Uh, this is a spec file which is going to be executed once we are going to execute our E2E testing. Okay. Now let me run it quickly. So in order to run that we have to just ng E2E. Now it's compiled successfully and now it's going to launch our Cypress tool. I'll be removing from here. It should go to the default page. First of all, it should go to the default uh, author and then I will wait for the some time. So Cypress dot wait for I'll wait for five seconds and then I will visit to the my login page. So this is basically if you see this is the test suite my first test and it inside it we are going to write our test cases similarly that we have written in our jasmine file right so now if you see our cypress here it's asking to uh, start e2e testing in chrome so i'll i'll go with the chrome now now if i test it now it's visiting to the author page if you see now i'm able to see the author data after five seconds it's going to redirect to our login page so in this similarly we can write here our all the test cases and that is going to be automated in our e2e testing so now, now in this way we can test our complete functionality for our entire application so this is the way that we are using our e2e testing but mostly this task is being done by the, our tester i hope you understand about unit testing integration testing and e2e testing and how to write the unit test case so if you have gone through this video from beginning to the end then I'm pretty much sure now you would be able to confident about writing the test cases and you will be able to answer about any questions related from our unit testing and friends if you have not subscribed my channel please subscribe it and don't forget to press the bell icon so you will get the notification of all of my upcoming videos and please like comment and share with the people who really need it I'll see you in my next video next week till then take care and keep learning thanks for watching